In this video, I'm gonna tell you the exception to Tim Cook's rule, to Apple's secrecy law, the one where the only acceptable answer to any question about the next iPhone or Mac or whatever is- Well, I can't comment on, uh, on, on rumors and so forth. Every investor call, TV interview, event, briefing, everything, every single time, except one. Sponsored by Ting. Most of you watching right now still aren't subscribed, so hit that button and bell and we can build the biggest and best community in tech together. It is precisely because Apple and Tim Cook are so relentlessly tight-lipped about everything that their answers are almost always effectively, not today, Satan, that the very, very few things they are willing to talk about just stand out like neon, bright, flashing neon. And I think I understand why because not everything is a product. Some things, some very few things are technologies that are or will be core to many, even most products. As technology evolves, it begins to push at, even break the constraints of existing products. That's what allows for not only better versions of those products, but also new and better products. Products that can only exist because of those ever advancing technologies. The iMac went from CRT to LCD, and that let Apple develop better iMacs, sure. But the iPhone could only come into existence because of LCD. There is just no world in which a CRT iPhone would ever have been possible. The same to some extent with OLED. It's let Apple make the iPhones better, but it's also let Apple create and ship a workable Apple Watch to begin with. And there's absolutely positively no reason to think that cycle of evolution and revolution will ever end. That it won't just keep going far into the techno-organic future. And if we go with that, if we accept that, then it's just a matter of laying the products out like bricks from here to there, from the present into the future, where and as they make sense. And that's exactly why I think Tim Cook has been willing to talk about things like- We're focusing on autonomous systems because everything, just everything is gonna benefit from machine learning and computer vision, which may power a car one day, sure, but is already taking the grunt work out of an increasing number of things, from home screen navigation with suggested apps to photo finding with sorting and saliency. But in the much nearer future, it's Tim Cook's comments on virtual and augmented reality that I think are gonna become just hella wicked obvious and soon, at least in their very first, very early stages. I'm excited about AR because I can see uses for it everywhere. And I'll get to AR glasses in a hot minute, but just think about a virtual reality headset in this context. As a standalone product, out of nowhere, maybe it makes the kind of sense that does, maybe the kind that doesn't, but as a premium escalation of the Apple TV? Because here's the thing, Apple never shipped a standalone television set. They prototyped a couple, and maybe Johnny Ives' old team still uses them to watch the Super Bowl, I don't know, but Apple never saw any margins or update cycles that would make for a workable, profitable, go-to-market strategy for a television set that would turn it from a prototype into a viable product with mass appeal. Even the last couple of Apple TVs have wrestled to find their place and their pricing in a commodity smart TV world. But if you don't look at them as a set of streaming boxes, but as a conduit for streaming services, and you start to think where Apple's typical margins, their silicon dominance, and even pricing really start to make sense, it's a premium product like a VR headset, like Apple Vision. Just in addition to targeting all the services, the entertainment, the education, the fitness plus, the gaming, all of them at an A14X Apple TV that you still attach to your television, they can also start targeting them at an A15V or whatever, and the Apple Vision that you wear on your head because as a headset, Apple will have room for a full-on system on a chip, SOC, even apparently active cooling to let it be all the max performance it can be. Just like an Apple TV, this just leverages all of that. And sure, absolutely, TV is a communal experience and a VR headset is a very personal one, but Apple's answer to that with the iPad has always, at least so far, been buy more of them. So that really seems less deal breaker for Apple and maybe even deal maker. Same with the mythical Apple glasses, but where the VR headset is an escalation of the TV experience, the glasses feel more like a distillation of the watch experience. Because sure, 
The Apple Watch can't do everything the iPhone can, but it can do a subset of brief, important, intermittent things far, far more conveniently than any phone. So much so, increasingly, I don't even reach for my phone. And because it's always connected, not just to the internet, but to my body, I can do a ton of critical health and fitness things, things that would be either awkward or just plain impossible with the iPhone alone. Apple glasses would be much smaller than a headset, obviously, and wouldn't be able to fit a full-blown SOC, but they would be able to fit a system in package, an SIP, like something between the Apple Watch and the AirPods today. So especially at first, glasses may not even be able to do what the watch can do today, maybe only a much smaller subset, but since they won't just be always on, but they'll always be in our line of sight, they'll be able to do those briefer, but more important, even more intermittent things, even more conveniently than the watch. So forget reaching for a phone. I won't even have to lift and turn my wrist. And it's likely they'll be able to do some critically important health and fitness things as well, especially when combined with AirPod tech and over time. And this, I think, is where Apple, because of their integrated product model, where they don't have to worry about extracting profits at the chipset or display level, but just scaling their architecture and technologies up and down the stack and across their product lines. This is where I think Apple can be hugely effective in pushing these new experiences, packaging them for the mainstream, hugely limited at first, for sure, for certain, but iterated and expanded rapidly over time. Same with pricing, super expensive at first to pay down R&D and go to market, but then also push down over time just like the iPhone Pro Max to the iPhone SE, the iPad Pro to the iPad nothing. And until then, because of then, you can save up or just plain save on your cell phone plan because Ting has talk and text for just $10 a month, data from 15, five gigabytes for 25, unlimited from 45, whatever you need. Just go to renee.ting.com to check out the plans and see how much you can save. You get access to the best nationwide coverage in America on pretty much any phone, iPhone, Galaxy phone, Pixel, Anything you can put a SIM card in, and you can keep your existing phone, your existing number if you want to, because the next generation of Ting Mobile is here. So just go to renee.ting.com and see how much you can save and get $25 off. Just click on the link in the description or go to renee.ting.com and get $25 off. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. For more on where Apple's going next, hit the playlist above. I'm going over everything from ongoing strategies to future products, and I'm gonna explain all of it. So hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.